was a, a 19th century scientist, British uh, mathematician called Lord Kelvin, who said, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So there's always been a need to measurement and with digital, it just made it a lot easier. The very first analysis that happened was when people started looking at log files. So every web server has a log file, literally logging what it's delivering to the user. Um, so the first tools were log file analyzers, literally going through rows and rows of what we call hit data. So every page is a hit, every image being loaded is a hit, every JavaScript being loaded is a hit. So the first challenge in those very early days, I'm talking sort of mid nineties, it's just trying to stitch together all of these hits into a session. So how would you do that? How would you know that an image and a page view and a JavaScript file all belong to one visitor and not the other? And in those days, it was about uh, matching up IP addresses because in the early days, most people had an individual IP address and then you could say that IP address was one user. So the purpose in those days was really to measure server performance, how much traffic was coming to a website. So those early users um, were IT people. People wanted to know how much resource was being used on their server. Were people coming? Do they need two servers, three servers? How should they scale? Um, so those tools were simple, basic tables and a few simple line charts. It was enough to give you a feel of what was happening, but it was only for IT, it wasn't for marketing. So in the late 90s, there was only a few software tools out there. Uh, WebTrends was a leader at the time, still doing log file analysis. Um, but what people realized, that although IT were interested in what was happening on their server, um, after that, they weren't interested. It was kind of, you know, a, one, a once check and then forget type analysis. What people started to realize was that a website wasn't a function of IT anymore. It started off there, um, but marketing were really interested. People in this sphere were kind of realizing, well, you know, what if we built these tools for marketers rather for the IT department? How would that change how you look at the data? Well, Google came ducking on my door uh, and wanted to talk to me and uh, yeah, offered me a job. The great attraction for me was the idea that we were, we were right at the tipping point of an industry moving away from IT related tools into marketing related tools. And Google wanted to invest in that big time. And for me, the, what the position was, was to be the first head of web analytics for Europe. So it was a great challenge to say, okay, what is Google gonna do with this product? What is Google Analytics? Well, the challenge then for anyone using analytics was these tools were very much um, faced at IT departments. So hard to read and hard to do anything with the data. Once you look at data and understand it, you need to do something with it. Otherwise, what's the point? So Google's very interested in, in moving the needle and saying, okay, if you have data, what can you do with it? And if you're a website and your uh, purpose is to bring visitors to your website, then you're spending money on that. You're doing some kind of online marketing, some kind of advertising. And at that time, even then in 2000 and, uh, 2005, uh, Google was very much the king of online advertising. So the the, the business model was, let's give it away for free. Um, let's help marketers understand how their website performs. And with that information, those marketers should hopefully understand the value of digital and spend more money on digital. And of course, that means spending most of your money with Google. Searching software existed before Google Analytics. It's what became Google Analytics. And the big attraction um, for Google with Urchin was just how yeah, beautifully simple their reports were, easy to navigate, uh, easy to show information. So a big part of the launch of Google Analytics was getting that simplicity out there so that you didn't need an IT person and you didn't need an analyst even um, to get information out of data. So marketing and marketers was very much the target audience. We were all as a team very nervous. Uh, we didn't quite know what to expect. Um, and excited, of course, you know, I did a tour of Europe going around the European uh, Google offices explaining what was happening with this launch and what the product was. And it was, you know, exciting times. There was a lot of press. I had to do my uh, media training. Um, so really exciting times. The problem we had in that first week, actually, is it was too exciting. And by that, I mean, the adoption was huge. Google did a, an estimate of roughly how big the market was, how many people were using or how many accounts were, were there for Google Analytics tools. And we estimated something like about 30,000. So within a week, Google Analytics had 100,000 new signups. So think about that, in seven days, you know, the industry had tripled in size. So that was like fantastic, oh, we're onto something. But we were expecting within two or three months to have about 100,000. So it was a little bit embarrassing at the time that we had to close down the signup process and say, okay, please wait for 12 months we literally had to scramble around and get more servers, uh, more hardware, 
uh, in place, more capacity, more bandwidth to process all of this data that was coming in. So it, it was fantastic to be so successful, but also yeah, a little bit embarrassing to explain why a company as big as Google had to actually stop the service. But also in the industry, we did receive some negative feedback in, in terms of things like, well, okay, you're giving this product away for free, Google. What's the catch? What are you really doing with the data? The other criticism we had was, what about all those other tools that, that pay for their service? What's going to happen to them when a big player, and it was, I don't know, 10, 20 billion dollar company in those days, 2005, um, what's going to happen when this big gorilla of Google comes in and gives away a product for free? What happens to all the smaller players?